this is the Untitled Tech Show and IBC 19 episode. This is the take two. Hopefully, this time with sound. Welcome to the Untitled Tech Show. I'm Lee. I'm Lucas. And uh, today, we're going to be covering IBC 2019. We went there for two days. Uh, we're going to section this video because it might be a bit longer. Uh, so we're going to talk about cameras, lights, uh, monitors, uh, tripods, and other accessories, and then our partners that we met with. Yep, you find those sections in the timestamp. Yeah, let's, if you skip let's ahead. go then. Yeah, let's go. So let's do this. All right, so let's start with cameras. Uh, I think the biggest, I wouldn't say the biggest because it's a quite a small camera. Uh, of the show, biggest thing of the show was uh, new Panasonic uh, S1H. Mm -hmm. um, this was just a prototype, still not production ready, but it was it was already pretty good. Yeah, it felt pretty solid. Um, this is a GH5 on steroids with a full frame and some other cool stuff like yeah. 6K think, recording. 6K. Yeah. It's not a 16 by 9 6K, it's more of a square. It has everything you remember from the GH series, um, including the flip out screen. In fact, it's got a new flip out screen. Better flip out screen, much better. Yeah, so it actually clears the HDMI port so you can flip it around and stuff. And uh, we'll, the video should be playing somewhere along here. Um, it does some cool other stuff. Uh, it's going to have raw recording via, um, probably via Atomos's Ninja V, which yeah. is a 4K recorder. But yeah, it's... well, I don't, yeah. But no one wanted to tell us. I don't know how it works. How it 6K ha on a 4K recorder. Yeah, some sort of magic. Yeah, black magic. Yeah. Well, no, this is Panasonic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Atomos. So. And Atomos. But yeah, yeah. a very cool camera worth looking at. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. got it's got nice uh, cooling as well. Yeah, it's got system. it's got active cooling. So it's got a fan and some heat and some vents at the back. Yeah, it's weatherproof, right? Yes, yeah. weatherproof. Like like just like the GH series. And it's got a great EVF. EVF is amazing. Mm. What about the batteries? Do you remember if it was the same as it's, GH5? It, it looks like a GH5 battery, but it's larger. Yeah. I'm not sure about battery life. I've heard that it's not the best, but mm. um, I don't think that's a problem, really. Next one is a company called Kinefinity. Yep, Kinefinity are a newer player. They've had cameras for a while, but no one took them seriously until like recently because um, they didn't have a distribution anywhere apart from in China or Japan, mm. China. So now we have a UK distributor in ProAV. He was one of our bigger companies after CVP, I think. Um, but it's a great camera. It's same form factor, same methodology as RED. Mm -hmm. So um, it has everything interchangeable. It's very modular, has its own lens mount that adapts to other lenses. Um, also has a internal ND. Oh, well. nice. Um, they have a few models, large format, because everyone's doing large format now. Ari, everyone's doing large format. Uh, Super 35 and the micro thirds ish sensor. All right. Very nice, though. Yeah, it will be interesting to see how how far they get, you know, because Red is a big competitor. It's a big company now. But uh, what we found, like, a lot of these sort of new companies, they are big players in terms of innovations. Yeah. Because all the companies, uh, I don't want to name any, but sort of they maybe were stuck in this sort of limbo where they th where they thought like oh, we don't need to innovate or maybe they just didn't have r the right people but now with these sort of companies like in infinities at zcam and others mm -hmm. it's just definitely i think yeah. lots of innovation lots of it's almost like they're eager to eager to um not push boundaries but give people what they're asking asking for yeah yeah where the larger yeah. players are kind of like um other players are, are, are more have a they always have a roadmap and a timeline, and they That's they true, probably don't yeah. like deviate from it too much uh, mm. because they have other products to protect as well. Where these cam this company, the only thing they're protecting is the other three cameras, which are identical apart from the sensor size. So, yeah. All right, let's move on to ah lenses. Ah yes. So um, yeah. I'm a big anamorphic lens guy. So <laughs> this company, Sirius, 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 yeah. Uh, yep, Sirius. they have a. Uh, Micro Four Thirds and X Mount, which is Fuji. They have a anamorphic lens, and the nice thing about this is the price and the performance. So I did get a chance to put it on my camera, do some small, short, very short tests. Um, it looked very nice. Bucker was nice, um, pleasing, not too contrasty. Obviously, you can see he's got a, the telltale massive blue streak. <laughs> they're, they're, but you know, we did speak to them about maybe using a different coating, so it's a, a cooler color instead of the blue. 
but um, the nice thing is the price, which is seven hundred pounds. I mean, anamorphic for seven hundred pounds. Yeah, yeah. it's a one two three. Anamorphic is not like a two times a one point eight, but it's good at that price. And they said they're going to have other oh, fifty mil. They talked about doing eighty five and one three five. So a full set of anamorphics for seven hundred pounds a pop. That's, that's, that's disgustingly that's cheap. That's the dream. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Some more established brands, so, I guess. Yeah. So uh, Sony introduced the FX9. Mm -hmm. So this one is basically an evolution. So it's got a full frame. So it's, so they're taking the A7 stuff, sticking it in a, I guess, say like a ENG style um, body. It's got like a really cool well, autofocus. Autofocus. Yeah, the autofocus right. autofocus is really good. So we put, put that on yeah, screen somewhere there, as well. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. So the good thing about this camera is, I guess, the price, which I think it's like twelve thousand uh, okay. after after bat, which is for what it, what it does. It's really good. Um, I it's mean, it's a reasonable price. It's a reasonable for price. Such it's it's, it's camera, uh, yeah. for what it gives you as well. And like I said, it, what it gives you, it's a good price. It's it's kind of price that rental houses will quite happy to pay. Oh yep. yeah, easy, yep. easy. Next one is least favorite Z cam, Z cam, Z cam, Z cam. Z -cam. Yeah. We're gonna say Z cam, or we're gonna say Z. 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 Let's okay. say Z cam. Let's say Z -cam. Yeah. yeah, Z cam. Um, something I've ordered for myself. Um, they're another new player, but they have been around for a while. Same, I guess, same issues. I guess not issues. They're fighting the same stigma that, that other companies have. They're a mm. Chinese brand. No one's really ahead of them, but yet they seem to have a big following. I mean, and NASA have their cameras. Oh, really? And the space station. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. I spoke okay. to the CEO Kinson, and he said they've got a couple up there. Um, the nice thing about these cameras is. I won't get into too technical details, but the reason why it's so tiny is because the technology used inside the camera. Um, for what, you're getting a whole lot of camera for a very little price. They have, at the moment, you can buy a Micro Four Thirds camera, which is a Z Cam E2. It's like 1008. It's a great little camera. It's a very cinema esque. It's like a very small red camera. Mm. Um, and they're also. It next, is quite small, yeah. It's like, tiny. Yeah, of, it's like a. Yeah, like it's that. Like, it's like a like a, a um, softball ball size, I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a little bit bigger, yeah. but yeah, similar. So the, I think the good thing, the the marquee things about these cameras is interchangeable lens mounts, PL, EF, and Micro Four Thirds. Yeah. So you can use a speed boosters on it, and then uh, is it built in uh, ND filter? Yeah, built yeah. in electronic ND. Electronic so LED. you can oh. dial it in, so it's no stops. That's really cool. Beautiful. And they got so they have. Super 35 one coming out and a full frame, both at six and eight K. It's not going to eight K though. I'm going to talk about that. Let's one. hope we can test them soon. Soon, yeah. If mine comes in this time soon, we can oh, definitely test okay. that. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, nice. Okay, well, this is Sigma. Sigma now do Sigma. You know for lenses, obviously. Now do cameras. Well, one camera. One, yeah. Well, they have other cameras, but yeah. this is like a series. Yeah, this is so, this is their first yeah. foray, I guess, into. Real cinema land. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's at the moment it's the smallest full frame camera in the world, bar none. Um, it's so small they have to make accessories to hold it. <laughs> um, it's another of the, it's just like the Panasonic. It it's a, has an L mount, which is an L mount Alliance, Sigma, Panasonic. I keep forgetting the name. Mm, Leica. Leica. Yeah. So they all share. They all sharing the L mount. So everyone's making lenses and cameras with L mount. So you can interchange. This camera is quite special. Because it's tiny, shoots 4K only, uh, shoots raw, can be used as a stills camera as well. It has a really cool function as a director's viewfinder, where it emulates any sensor size from any oh, camera. Oh, yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it has a director's viewfinder attachment for the back, and then you can put a PL on the front or whatever because it's L mount, which you can adapt for anything. That's we, had, we had some. Uh... Blast from the past yeah, as yeah. well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, this is the f was it their first camera? Yeah, the, the big first yeah. Ursa is that? Uh, yeah, yeah the Black Magic Ursa. Ursa yeah. Which, which yeah. I think we got nicknamed the Ursa Major because you have the Ursa Mini, Ursa Major. Right, right. But it has like a anyway. You'll see. It's oh got yeah, like, the like best the screen ever. <laughs> ten inch flip out screen. <laughs> I mean. I mean, yeah, you now buy monitors and stuff and recorders, but this was this but, was great. But think about it, not only is that ten inch monitor there and this five inch one on the side and the opposite side and the oh yeah, and the opposite you side have the settings there yeah, and, and the opposite side yeah. has another five inch on the other side, so it's two five inch and a ten inch and one. That's ah, crazy. And this is my favorite. I mean, we had we had sort of these cameras before. This is a three sixty 
dog mount camera. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to see a dog with a camera with a helmet. Yeah, <laughs> I've yeah. never seen a dog with a helmet. Uh, they had some other things here, right? But they had the American football attachment thing. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. A, it's like a. Well, that was like a sort of like a rubbery thing that you can throw. You put you put that in there and you throw it right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just don't want to see the no, but we, lens scratch. No, but we looked at know. the lens right on the demo the unit they had and it was just scratched yeah. on both sides. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's not there. Nice it's, idea, but uh, yeah. Let's move on to the lights. Uh, we have a company called K5600. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's K yeah, it's K yeah, K5600. Yeah. Uh, it's a French company and we use one of their lights in our studios. The Joker. Yeah, the Joker. Joker yeah. 400 we have and there's an 800 as well. Um, but um, they don't really do very good advertising because the new thing here is they have the 400 in LED now, which means it gives out half, well, he said, he said less than half the, half the, Heat, yeah, that's yeah. half the heat, and it draws less power as well. I can't remember what wattage equivalent it was, but um, it, it, it's just a straight replacement for a, a normal Joker. We should try and see if we can get. Yeah, one we should definitely it. test out because it's about LEDs now. Yeah. I mean, everyone is making LED lights. They are really good, you know. Their lighting industry and cinematographers didn't want to put any fans into lights because the fan technology wasn't there, so they were quite loud. But now we have Noctua fans that yep. are super, super uh, quiet. So yeah, LEDs all the way. And talking ah. LED lights and new lights, we've been to a world premiere of a uh, new Aperture Light, Aperture 600. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is again LED and it's apparently as powerful as 5K HMI. So we'll see. We'll, yeah. we'll put it to the well, test. But they did like s throw a spot onto the ceiling, which is, I don't know how that ceiling was, but it's pretty high. Yeah. Uh, and you, that light cut straight through the ceiling. It was to the ceiling, I should say. It was very powerful light, yeah. yeah. But like, a, like, like Ted in, uh, from, a from Aperture, he has been saying for years that LED is coming for HMI's crown. Which they can coexist. I think they probably coexist. I don't think yeah, it's a straight replacement, yeah. but um, definitely if you need bright lights, because you know cinematographers and gaffers have always said that LEDs don't have just don't have the power, the output power. But I think yeah, next year we might see. Maybe like in indie, indie movies, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it's gonna be. Indie. Yeah. It's yeah. gonna. It's cheaper. It's much more portable than a huge 5K HMI yeah. and. Yeah. And you can run it off two V mounts. Yeah. Which is yeah. cool. Was it four? I can't remember. It's, it's some crazy wattage, but yeah. There was the bar had four, but I don't know if you needed four. No, we're going to change it. Change, change it to two. Yeah, yeah. because you're getting, you're getting higher wattage V mounts now. Yeah, for the, like the Alexa LF and stuff. Yeah. Another good thing going to like exhibitions and expos like this is that you can talk straight most of the time to CEOs mm -hmm. and uh, engineers that work on the product, and we did have some uh, suggestions. Uh, to the aperture team, pretty much it was about the ballast and uh, the rotating circle that changes the, the cal, cal temperature mm -hmm. and brightness. It was just like too sticky, you know, it wasn't smooth enough. So they said they're going to look into yeah. it. Yeah, we'll see. Cool. Yeah. And of course, every light or every accessory has an uh, app an now. App. Everyone everyone has an app. Yeah. Anyone who has LEDs has there an app. There is an app for everything. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Literally is an app. Yeah. Um, Aperture's app is pretty cool. They have um, every light moving forward that they're making has some Bluetooth technology called mesh mesh networking. So you can control up to, I think, 10,000 lights of one app, which is pretty cool. It's like um, DMX on steroids, basically. Um, you can change everything. And the app can also use your camera on your phone to take a picture of any color and replicate that color on an RGB light anyway. Talking about bigger players in lights, yep. uh, Ari unveiled Ari Orbiter, which is sort of like mother of all lights. Uh, it was pretty much maybe someone w one day just woke up in there. It was like, let's put everything into one light. Because <laughs> why pretty not? Because we can. Because we can. Yeah, and, pretty much. And they did it. And it's just, it's amazing. You know, it's there's it's so much technology in this yeah. single light. It has all the Lee's and Roscoe gels. Yep. It has uh, camera profiles as well, right? Yeah, camera profiles, yeah. yeah. So because every camera has a different sensor and captures the light differently, so you can actually uh, tied to a specific camera that you're using. Uh, how about the price? It's, it's going to be expensive, right? It's really expensive. Yeah. It's really yeah. expensive. But can we have one, please? <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Ah. Nangwang. Nangwang. Another lighting company who've been around for a very long time. Probably I've never heard of them, but their factory manufactures lots of LED lights. So they have this one, which is like a very small 
How big is it? It's like it was small. It's tiny. It was is uh, that's pro- that, probably that, like that big. Yeah. This this big cubed, right? So it's so it's, that's Pixel Three XL, and yeah. it's pretty much that. Yeah, it's like that. Cool thing about this light is it kicks out like light, like a one K tungsten, which is a lot of light. You can do a lot yeah. with that. Um, and this was just the sixty. That's right? a sixty watt. Yeah, yeah sixty watt. And you're spitting out 1K worth of light. And you, run, you can run it off mains and V mount. But the cool thing, you can run it off two MPF Sony batteries. It also has like a Fresnel attachment to the front. So you can mm. spot and flood. And it has like some other accessories. But it has, it has two bigger brothers, a 300 and a 500. None lights, other lights, very impressive, which we have here, is they have uh, LED tubes. So these ones are quite affordable. Um, this is a two foot one. Uh, they have four foot ones. Four as well. foot and yeah. two foot. The, yeah. the, they, have, uh, they have this one and they have another one which are um, a step up from this. They're thicker though. And they said, he said the. Uh, oh, yeah. And uh, it sort of has like a big handle yeah, at the yeah, end. Yeah, big handle. So it was a step up from that. But the, these ones are the ones we went for for some uh, creative lighting in the studio. The cool thing about these are it's like $300, 300 pounds for this one. It's battery operated, which is cool. It's full RGB control with heat and saturation. Um, let's see. So you can use situation. It's got like all kinds of cheesy effects, like you know, cop car and stuff. <laughs> um, but these are re- really nice. Uh, they feel really good on the back, which not mm-hmm. many people do. Is they have the instructions, which, That's are, perfect, which yeah. are awesome. Uh, another nice thing is like it's hexagonal, so you can like put it on the surface, and it's not going to fall off. Yeah. Fall off. And um, you can mount it in uh, the Kino flow. Yep, it mounts in the Kino. So mount, it's a yeah. T was it T three tube or something? It, it mounts straight into a Kino housing, and you can daisy chain lights to each other and power them all up each other or control one as a master and the rest of the slave. Yeah, yeah. How long is the battery life? Yeah, it has a ton of battery, uh, two hours on max brightness. So it's good. It's great. Like, um, I, I, I already love these. Yeah. We have two of these. We'll, we'll be doing a test of these ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have two two foot ones. So depending on how the test goes, we yep. might order the four foots. Yep. Oh, and of course, flexible lights. Everywhere. Uh, Everywhere, everywhere, pretty much Everyone's everywhere. Yeah. yeah, it's the technology is here, so why not? Yeah. You know, uh, we've seen a very small light uh, that credit you can card put size. credit cards. It, it, it was credit pretty card much yeah, thickness yeah. of credit card and size of credit yeah. card. You can plug it straight into your phone. You yeah. have a light from Done. that size to like one by ones, two by ones. Was it eight by eight? Eight by Maybe eight. So light was... For smaller studios, it's a good option mm. for like the key light because if you if you know. You haven't got space to have like a big softbox on a Joker. Having that just right in front, you know, a bit of diffusion. And also space. for you know for travels, if you if you need to shoot somewhere, yep. and you have a limited amount of luggage, you mm-hmm. just put it in your suitcase. Yeah, go pack it right down. And also the good thing, you can use a lot lighter, smaller stands as well, which is another yeah. factor. Like, you know that's, the one like the true. the ones that fold upwards, like the uh, you have on small oh, lights. Oh yeah yeah, 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 very small lights. It's awesome. Let's move on to audio. I think the biggest thing this year was what Zoom and sound devices introduced, which was raw audio recording. 30-bit float audio. Yeah, it's it sounds weird, it is weird, but somehow they managed to sort of do a raw audio recording. So you're not going to have the clipping anymore. Uh, you can pretty much dial it to zero. It will still record everything. Yeah, it's perfect. I wonder how it's going to look like in post production. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's weird because in video post production, thirty bit float. If you have raw video, it's a it's a painted process. Like yeah, you know, yeah. like like, like for instance, like uh, like red files. Yeah, like how how big the files are going to be. Yeah, how much post production I'm I'm going to have to do. How much Hopefully. power are you going to have to have on your machine? Yeah. It should, yeah. Sh- in theory, raw should be easy to play, but I'm not sure about file size. We just need to have a look at But yeah. it's an amazing technology because he was, the spokesman was saying, you could have a dial on zero and uh, you could recover it in post. Just, but don't, please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I work in post and, you know, things should be shot nicely and recorded perfectly. And then if there is something, I can fix that. But I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're getting one of those, though, aren't we? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're getting one of these next week, and we're going to test it in the studio and on a shoot in South Africa. Mm-hmm. So we'll bring you the results later. OK, next yeah. company is, again, one of the sort of younger companies, but very ambitious. Making waves. A lot of some people are you know, buying their kit. So 
Um, as we did today. Uh, as we did today, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, at the show, they were showing shotgun mic. Oh, no, it wasn't a shotgun mic. It was, no, yeah, it was, it was a shotgun mic. It was yeah, a shotgun, shotgun, shotgun mic well, that you could yeah. change the capsules. Oh, yes. To get different yeah. responses, which uh, which is really good. The, the, the amount of um, of direction the recorder could pick up, pick, pick up patterns, sorry. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. For that, and then, which was really cool. They also had a recorder slash wireless transmitter. Yes. Which so is really cool. you put a shotgun straight into the recorder, mm -hmm. and it's... I wouldn't I wouldn't use it as a main recorder, but mm -hmm. as a backup recorder, yeah. it's it's great. So you know? if you're gonna lose your use your wireless signal, it backs up onto the device. Yeah. And you also or if you are somewhere, you know, like this expo and uh lots of these conferences have uh signal lockdown, yeah, yeah, so you yeah. can't just do wireless, yeah, you yeah. know. Uh, that's great. But I think the star of their show, it was their connect system. Oh yes, oh yes. Uh so traditionally you have one transmitter, one receiver. That's it. Uh, what they've done is they have two transmitters and one receiver. Uh, so you no longer have to find space on your camera or on your tripod somewhere. You just mount one receiver, obviously two outputs to your recorder, yep. but... It's slightly larger, but the benefit is, of it's the slightly larger unit, is know, one unit. Yeah. And also, the, the nice thing is you can, you can actually control the transmitters from the receiver. Oh yeah, that's so. If you have talent up on a podium or something, you can do to you know panic because I've had that time where oh. I'm filming something <laughs> and you break in cold sweats because it's clipping, you know, and you don't have to go and, and mess with them. You can just do it from the from the. Well, the, it's no longer be clipping with well, the. Probably <laughs> with not. The no. no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's too. Bad. But this is this is very uh, very cool. Okay, next one is monitors recorders. Yeah, Atomos well, updates. Atomos. Let's yeah. Atomos is the biggest player without a doubt. Uh, they've introduced their new recorder. No, it's an update, yes. right? It's an update, update to, existing, to recorders. existing recorders. Not all of them, so please check their website. But basically you'll be able to uh, get four streams and direct it on the screen. Yeah. So it's multi multi recorder, same way as Apollo. Yeah. Um sound devices. Or video devices, I think it's still sound devices, Apollo, which is a great recorder, bit clunky in the software side, having to get the stuff off, the streams yeah, off. The menu is not great, yeah. and you always have to like unmount the drive. Uh, yes, yeah, a bit clunky, but, but it's, it's, yeah. it's good, but like I said, clunky. And it feels like the product doesn't get hardly any updates. So I'm not sure how long it's going to be around for. Yeah, because they even told us they're going to. Focus just on audio. Back on audio, yeah. Because yeah, so yeah, yeah. there, there. I don't think there will be any new Apollo coming out. No. Maybe they will keep sort of patching the patching, software, yeah, yeah. but that's about it. But th this is Atomos. So we all know how Atomos works. Well, if you don't, they have recorders that record out of your camera's HDMI or SDI or both. Um, and now they have this update where you can have four singles in and out. You can spit. Oh, four HD, four four ten eighties in mm. up to sixty, and out you get the out plus your your plus uh, the switcher as well. So you get five out, which is cool. Yeah. And it also overdriving the display to how many nits is it? Three thousand, three thousand nits somehow. A mad three thousand nits. Yeah, yeah, that's going to get bright. Yeah, it's very bright. Uh, they do have a fifteen inch version of that as well. Yeah, Sumo. which was really nice. Yeah, I think that's yeah. something. It's been nice to have on some webcam shows. Because um, it's a bigger display, it's, it's easy to, to read visually. Especially um, when you have like loads of cameras and uh, instead of hooking up each camera with small seven inch screen, mm -hmm. you can have this 15 inch and then you can see uh, if it's in focus, all the exposure tools built in and it's just a great product. Yeah, It's, uh, it's uh, tough as well, so you can take it to a location. Yeah. They have two versions though. They have a recorder. They have a the Sumo with the recorder and the Sumo without recorder. They also have a new series of monitors. production monitors. I'll call them production monitors called the Neon. They're very expensive for a start. Yeah, yeah. They're... But they are very good. They have um a few sizes. I think they have like a camera top one, 17 inch, 22 and 55. 55 for 55, sure. Because yeah. I love the 55. Yeah, I think the, the the panels themselves come from Panasonic, so they are some of the best of the best. I think the 10-bit panels as well. Real 10-bit, not like the other 8-bit plus 2 thing that some <laughs> companies do, which is fine. Um, but the great thing about this is just the rendition of colors and oh, the yeah. viewing angle. Like I said, we were, at, we were trying to win some swag from Atomos. So <laughs> we were like at the side of this TV, and we were distance away. We literally 
upside down, but we could see the whole picture. It was the whole, it's like literally the whole picture, and there's no weird color shifting or anything. It and was the color reproduction was pretty good as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, it was it yeah. was amazing. Uh, um, or other thing about this as well is on the back, they've repurposed the Ninja V, took the screen off it, and turned it into a pure just recorder. And these things will record 4K streams into that recorder. And it, you can dismount it as well. So in the future, they are obviously going to make 8K recorders because yeah. that's what's going to happen. Um, and you can replace that recorder with 8K recorder and keep the TV because of the TV should last a while. Well, TV, the monitor should last the a while. The display, yeah, yeah. yeah. So more HD, another great monitor brand. They've been making monitors for ages. Some of the best interface on any monitor I've ever used. It's, it's great. It has like a page system where you can configure each page for a different camera or for a different person. And it's just really nice. It's very uh, iOS feeling, very mm -hmm. iOS. Um, but they also have production monitors coming. They have two sets, um, HDR and normal, I think, ones. Um, yeah, everyone's doing HDR now, though. Yeah, uh, yeah. 4K, of course. Uh, yeah. And this was just a prototype, so we were not able to play with it. but. Hopefully soon. I, I think they released them already, no? I think uh, or uh, yeah. just after yeah. NBC, yeah. Yeah. So hopefully we'll get them in the studio and have a, have a play. Oh, we've got to see UP and have a play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, next up from monitors, it's my favorite because I do some color grading as well. Mm -hmm. This is Flanders Scientific. Flanders are great monitors. I have one, and I love it. Yeah. But after seeing this uh, 4K HDR, I mean, wow. Just wow! Well, the, the colors on it are yeah. so nice. I think I think benefit from like Flanders years and years of making displays. Yeah, well, not yeah. Like making displays, calibrating displays because I think these displays are from also from Panasonic, where everyone else is getting them from. Because it's that good, everyone's getting Panasonic displays. Yeah, it makes sense. But they, yeah, Flanders know what they're doing. Um, they have whatever they're doing, secret magic dust thing that's sprinkled on the, on the machines. It's great. Oh, and the best best screen. The, I don't want to say monitor. It's a screen. It's, 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 it's a wall. It's a wall. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a TV wall. Yeah, Sony Crystal LED display. Yeah, this thing was. I mean, you can see there is a person walking by, and he's almost next to it. There yeah. was some protective like railing. A, like, I think it's like a four foot barrier between the, the screen and uh, and the person. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like it's so big. And when you get close to it, you can't really see any pixels. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how they do it, but it's just it was. mind blowing. Oh, yeah. and, the, and the color reproduction was beautiful. Okay, next up is sort of tripods, accessories, and know, gimbals. And gimbals. Gimbals, gimbals, gimbals. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of gimbals. I mean, like everyone going back to that Siriu company, even they had a gimbal. Yeah, they did. They did. <laughs> But this was uh, Zion. Yeah, and Zion. They had a few gimbals out. You got a couple of new ones as well, like for mobile phone. The latest one is for mobile phones and point and shoot cameras. Yeah. Um, it's pretty nice. But uh, I'm, I'm partial to Zion's gimbals. They, I think they get a lot right more than some of the other companies who are probably Definitely. more well known for their gimbals. Apart from gimbals, there were some sliders as well. Yeah. Uh, this one's my favorite just because it's super tiny and it travels. So not only the head moves but also the whole uh slider moves and so basically you get twice as much width yeah you get you know? yeah you get the it's 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 insane how light yeah. this this was it was very light and very very, very small you can put it in the backpack so easy it's very light in the pocket too so yeah. not only does it go from side to side the camera can rotate so you can get like a, a parallax movement where the camera will lock onto a subject and the whole thing moves and the camera will stay pointing so you get like nice foreground stuff and moving in the foreground it's great which is of great course it interviews. comes with an with an app as well so yeah it comes with yeah. an app you can yeah. set points set waypoints do easing in and out and stuff um it's a company called iFootage that actually makes some of the best monopods that we saw oh yeah there was uh there was a very interesting Jedi Would you say thing. like Jedi sort of monopod Mo yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah very cool yeah <laughs> we'll put the we'll put some video of someone doing something there. <laughs> Another slider. This was a very different slider because it is modular. I mean, there are sliders that are modular, so mm -hmm. you can sort of attach one to each other and and such. But this was completely different. So it's like a it's a very bendy track. You could bend it in different shapes. So you could, but you yeah. only bend in 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 horizontal. It doesn't incline or anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It has its limitations, and yeah. honestly, it was quite expensive. It was very expensive yeah, for what yeah. it was for, for the smaller one, but you can make yeah. it longer and shorter. Yeah, which yeah. I guess is if you need that, it's something you can invest further in. Yeah, I guess if one. if 
if you have a specific use case, then yeah, it's absolutely. a great thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, blind spot. Yeah. Again, I think this uh, company started on Kickstarter yeah. a few yeah. years ago. Yeah. With extra this product, uh, it's great. I mean, it takes Sony batteries, right? Sony M. If so, it's basically a hub for Sony MPF batteries. You could call it that. Yeah. So you plug a MPF in, and it has outputs. It has two USB three outputs. Yeah. Then USB C, micro USB. Uh, that's it, I yeah. think. Yeah, I think which it. is pretty good. Yeah, it's super small. You can literally put it in your pocket. It doesn't weigh anything, because yeah. all, all the weight is in the battery anyway. Yeah, yeah. I think the, the other cool thing is if you have lots of these batteries, which are really cheap on Amazon. Like yeah. the medium-sized one, go for like like uh, ten pounds, something ridiculous, yeah. a decent one. So you can actually power other cameras from this battery. Oh yeah. Because they have a battery mount that yeah. goes into the dummy, dummy batteries. I mean, some new products, for, for instance, is a company called Axun. Axun, yeah. Axun. Axun. And they make this little device, uh, if you can see here. And this device is $219. What it does, it takes the HDMI in and spits out a signal up to 1080 to 30. Up to, and you can send it to th four devices simultaneously. So I'm going to say four devices, four iPhones or four Android phones. Or, or mix, tablets, or, or mix, yeah. yeah, of tablets, and it's this great little quick, dirty device. If you need to give a feed to an exec producer, a makeup artist, or just spit it out somewhere else, it's great to have on set in a pinch. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it's it has some delay, so putting focus, critical focus, I'd say, yeah. it's not the best thing to do no. with this. But man, like for the price. Yeah. So nothing, nothing else does this for the price. No. Not, no. Nothing nothing at all. And yeah, lots of the times you have you have people who want to see, see you yeah, know, yeah. You I know. mean, the other great thing is you can actually record the video onto your phone. You hit record. Oh, really? Yeah, it's okay. a 1080 stream. I'll actually have good qualities because we're going to test this. I haven't tested it yet. I will test it. Um, and the, the app has loads of functions. You can even load LUTs oh, really? on here, okay. which is absolutely ridiculously Amazing. I keep banging. He's going to break it. That's great. <laughs> cool. I All right. Well, that's it. If you guys have any questions, just put them in the comments. If you want us to review any hardware or software, or if uh, you need some tips about hardware and software, we're here to help. Yep. It was quite a lot, and we've seen and covered loads more. Unfortunately, we don't have time for everything. So on to the B-roll. Yes. You need to finish now because we actually have a, you know, genius show to record.
Ah, but ma'am. Ouch. All right. Well, that's it for now. See you next time. Next time.